Welcome everyone, I'm Alison Gonzalez, I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and in this video we are going to get into all of visuals in Power BI. Well, most of them at least. Part of my report building series we build a report if we don't know what visuals we want to include and which ones are going to be the best for the data that we have. So we're going to be talking all about our basic standard Power BI visuals. And in the next video, I'm going to tell you all about my favorite custom visuals you can download from AppSource completely for free. So let's get into it. All right. So here we are in this Power BI report, put pretty much a bunch of visuals in here, got them all set up with data all ready to go. Let's take a look at this and really see how are we able to modify, change these, how, where are we putting the data in each of the fields. So first off up here, I have a slicer. And now with your slicer, they have the years in here. We have one singular field to put data in. I have my years, and so this is just showing all of the years that I have in my data set here. And it, with this, I am able to, of course, if you deselect, I can see all of the years. Then once I make a filtered selection, I am able to see, now I'm only seeing data from 2005, now I'm only seeing data from 2009. Now I can also modify this. So if I want to multi-select, maybe I want to see all of 2008 and 2007. If you hold control, I can multi-select and only pick the years I would like to see. Now this can be disabled, so let's kind of go into our formatting, see how we can change things around. So clicking on our paintbrush to go into our formatting, and I have my visual selected, let's kind of just go through all of our settings. First off, in the slicer settings, this allows me to choose what type of slicer I want to have. Now I can have a vertical list, which is this one right here. If I don't have a ton of items, this is a decent option. Tile is my personal favorite because this makes it more of a button. And in my experience, everyone wants to click a button. Now, if you don't have a ton of space, and of course, as you resize this, these will also resize to fit the space you have. Now, if you're like, I don't have that much space, I have like this teeny little amount that I wanna put the slicer, then a drop down is a really good option for you because you'd be able to kind of fit that right into your space and then it would overhang the space you have to make your selection. And then once you make your selection, you could close it right back up again. So if you have very minimal space, but you want the slicer on the page, then a drop down is a good option for you. We also have between. Now between lets you control the start as well as the end point for that data. Move it around there, there we go. You're also able to choose if you want your starting point always to be static and you want your end point to move, or if you want the starting point to move but your end point be static, you can choose this. Like I said, tile is my favorite option. It makes it seem more of a button. I'd prefer to move it like that, take up a little bit less space. I'm able to turn my header area off if I want to get rid of that name over here. So if it's really clear, like these are very obviously years, you know, I probably don't need it to say calendar year up there. But again, sometimes labels are necessary for your data type, but always do a look through, make sure you don't just have unnecessary text in there that's forcing people to read things and spend time on something they don't need to do, that they just automatically can figure out. Moving down to our values, this is where you're able to change your button color, or if you're changing, if you're in a different slicer, it's going to color setting, it's gonna kind of look a little bit different. But for this one, I am able to change my font color. I am also able to adjust, and let me get out of the way. I'm also able to adjust if I would like a border, and I can also set a background. So if I wanna set a background color for these, and then I could always adjust the font color, and then I could even adjust the border amounts if I want one, if I don't want one, all that good stuff. So let's say I only wanna have a border on the left side, and I want my line width to be a bit more. You can play around with that, see it what you like, again, play around with the text, bold, change your font type, all of that good stuff on here. Now moving over to your general settings, 
This will allow you, first off, your properties, if you want to be really specific with your height, width, as well as exact position on the page, if you're trying to match it up with something. I can decide if I want to have a title again. If your text, if your data does not need that, don't put the text there if it's not necessary. Again, if it is not obvious what you're looking at, you definitely want to have that title, have that descriptive text in your place. Effects is always going to be the background of the visual. So we, our values was adjusting our actual buttons. The background in my effects, that is going to be the actual background of the visual. So the background to the visual itself is going to be in here and then you can play with your transparency level depending on if you have an image or background you want to show through. You also want to set a border and a shadow in here as well. Now that we have our slicer set, let's move on down and talk column and bar charts. Now this one is set as our very first option, which is a stacked bar chart. And you'll notice we have this whole first line, which are giving us all different line, column and bar chart options. And again, the column or the bar chart and the column chart give you the exact same data. It just depends on whether you have more room horizontally or vertically that you want to showcase with your visual. It will be different though if you're going from a stacked to a clustered. Now, if I change this from a stacked, which here is my breakdown, I have my X axis, my Y axis, and I also have an item in my legend. You can see I have an item in the legend that is breaking this down into three distinct fields inside of each bar or column. When I move this to a clustered, I can see that those are each now distinct items. Now I personally, if I'm analyzing multiple fields for each of these items like this, I am going to pick the clustered over the stacked every time because it's a lot easier to see what amount is for which one. Now again, with your space, I could be going with the bar chart or I could be going with the column chart for this visual. I like the column chart personally better for this because it looks, the spread is a little bit better. You're also able to change your data label settings. So if I want to make that text bigger, smaller, add backgrounds, all that good stuff, I'm able to do that. Now, final option, I'm going to move this back to a regular stacked and because I want to show you what a 100% stacked will do. So look at the top here, I'm going in a descending order from most to least. When I change this to a 100%, look at my data label right now inside there, my first one's 6.9 million over here. When I change this over to a stacked column chart, this is now changing to a percentage. So depending on the data, you want to look at the way you're seeing this and you want to analyze it. First off, clustered would be my top pick, just to see that number a little bit more distinctly. But if you want to look at it more as like parts that are a percentage, like my 45 to 54 group, what percentage of that out of the whole in my US sales ordered, then this is a really handy view for that. And of course, I can hover over it, look at my tooltip to see a little bit more specific data there. But that's the difference between using the 100% stacked versus using a regular stacked column chart versus using a cluster chart. Of course, with these, you can go into your formatting. You can change anything on your X or Y axis, including the text size, colors. You can turn your titles on or off. I'm a big fan of turning these titles off because normally they're pretty obvious. So getting rid of the extra text, plus it always has that up in your name as well. So either changing the name to make it more specific to the visual instead of just a repeat of those fields or taking that out is gonna be one of my main tips when using column and bar charts like this one. You of course can do the same in your Y axis. You can adjust your legend. So if I wanna turn that off or anything related to my legend is in here, including its position on the page. If you wanna flip flop that all around the text type size color and then the title if i want to change this from saying age breakdown to something else i could do that all in my legend section moving on down here's my data label section now if i turn those off i can see 
it looks a little bit cleaner, but again, you would have to hover. So depending on the amount of data you have, the layout, what you want to see, you can play around with having those on, changing the position and color of them with your values and adding a background in or fully off altogether, seeing what is the most clear way to communicate your data. Finally, with these in your general section, of course, properties is always where you're gonna change your size of the visual or its position on the page if you don't wanna just do that manually. Change your title, so I could take that fully off if I don't want it, put it back in, change the name of it, what I wanna do, as well as change the actual background of my visual right here. All right, moving from column bar charts into our line chart options. We've got two over here. Here is the area chart, that's the one on here where I can see I have all of the sections kind of filled down. I feel like it gives it a better sense of place. I feel more rooted in place with this data with it filled down versus a line chart where these all seem like very distinct, unique amounts. Now, if that's really what you're tracking, that would be better in a regular line. But if these are all kind of interconnected numbers and you wanna see this view with the area, I think gives you a better sense of what is the top number versus everything just kind of being separate on here. Now, here's your fields. You have an X and a Y axis for this. You are also able to have a legend area in here. If you're breaking down your value and you want those multiple lines showing up. You also have small multiples. Anytime you're pulling a field in small multiples, it's gonna split your visual. So you're gonna see different sections in there. So if I pull this into my small multiples instead, now I have a little tiny visual for each of them instead of showing all of them on the same one. In my settings, I'm able to go through, modify my X and Y axis just like I could for column bar charts. Really, my settings are all the same. Once you get used to the placement for these, for all of these standard visuals, they're all pretty close. As long as you have your X axis, your Y axis, your legend, you're gonna have your data labels in here and in your general, that's where you get your properties, your title, and then the effects, which are gonna be the background of the visual that you would be able to adjust and move around with as much as you wanted. The one thing I always love to point out when you are looking at Let's make that a little bit lighter, there we go. When you are looking at a line chart of any type, if you are able to add in a x-axis constant line, min line, max line, average line, there's a bunch you're able to add in depending on the data that you have or what you're measuring, and that is gonna give you a distinct line through here. That way, and you're also able to adjust the settings for these lines very easily to be able to adjust the color, whether you want it to be a solid line, a dashed line, or a dotted line, if you want it to show up as a full percentage, anything like that. Now, with these, personally, because all of my actual data lines are solid, I personally like to use the dotted or the dashed lines because those are really distinct. And I also wanna make sure I'm adjusting the color to not be one of my default theme data colors. That way it really stands out with what I'm doing. And that way, like right now I have mostly blues in here, probably make it a black line, maybe even adjusting the transparency a bit to just kind of show up a little bit lighter, kind of full, fall in the background so you can see it's part of the visual, not the data inside of it. But depends on what you're going with, here in your little magnifying glass so often it is overlooked but especially for lines where we are essentially like looking what could be happening in the future what is what is our trend how are we going versus a column or a bar chart which is very like here's all our past data this is what it is with a line chart because you're looking forward the trend lines are great for kind of forecasting what may come and really predicting that Moving on into some more visuals, here is one of my favorite ones, which this is, of course, the scatter chart. Now here with our scatter chart, we've got a bunch of fields. We've got a values field, we've got an x-axis, y-axis, we have a legend field, we have a size that controls the size of your circles. We also have this play axis, and now this play axis is what allows it to do this. So this is just playing through all of the years in my data and now because of that it is letting us see how each of these points goes through now i can go through if i click on an individual point it's going to show me all of the points for those years distinctly or if i click on another one it's going to show me that path to analyze that 
In your formatting, again, your standard x-axis, y-axis settings where you're able to change those, your legend. Now, the one thing that is good that we really wanna look at is our plot area background. You're able to add an image back here if you want to. You wanna change what's going on there, as well as over in our general section. Now, in my properties, I get to size the height and position of this page. And in these advanced options, I can decide if I want this to be responsive. And we also have all of our regular general options here, adding our title, background, effects as normal. Now, if I wanted to change my plot area, the actual numbers that are showing up as my lowest and highest points, inside of each my x-axis and my y-axis, I can go to this range section and adjust this right here. So right now, my minimum and maximum are set to auto. But if I wanted to control this, say I'm gonna say negative 50, that is adjusting that amount. So now it's kind of pushing all of that data over to show that amount. We'll make that a little bit larger, make it a little bit more obvious what that number is starting off with. It will adjust for you. So you can set your minimum and you can set your maximum and play around with that for both your x-axis as well as for your y-axis to adjust those if you want your little circles to not get cut off in here. I will say also, don't forget in your legend, if you want to change these around, you can decide your legend position and then you can change your legend text and also if you have that title and then your marker section is going to be where you can adjust all of your colors. So Australia and Canada, really close if I wanted to make that a little bit different because over here I've got Australia and over here I have Southwest showing up really similar colors where they're faded and then of course this is Southwest and UK really like pretty much the same color. So if I wanted to change UK to, let's say this color is a bit different, you can adjust each of these. Next up, we've got some of our wildcard visuals here. So this of course is your tree map visual. Your tree map visuals, you can nest multiple categories. And then if you put them in all of the same one, that allows you to kind of drill down into those, whether you want to drill down into a singular one and see the categories inside of that, or whether you would like to just drop down a level fully or drop down into the final level, however you wanna navigate through that data. You can also move things into the detail field and that will break it down. So if you wanna see that all at once without having to drill into it, then you can move items into your detail from that category. But depending on your setup of your data, that will allow you to see this at different points. Of course you have um, your setup, there's no X or Y axis for this, but you're able to add a legend in, you're able to adjust all of your colors for the different levels that you're looking at. And of course you can add in category labels, take those off and all of your regular general settings. Next one up is right here. This is the waterfall chart. Now the waterfall chart is great for showing change over time. And now with this as parts of a whole. So this blue line, the very last one that's showing all of the parts, of the whole, and this one is each section on its own. You're able to adjust how you would like to see this in going through your sort axis. So if I want this sorted, currently a sort off of profit in an ascending order. So 2005 was my lowest profit year, 2006, then 2008, and then 2007. Maybe I wanna see that descending. Maybe I wanna see the largest item first and how we got up to that. So 2007, our largest year, 2008 was next, then 2006, then 2005. Or if I wanted to, I could change my sort axis to look at the year instead of the profit. If I wanted to flip those around, depending on your metrics for that. And in your setup, we have a category field. Um, y axis are gonna be your main ones. There's also a breakdown and kind of a tooltip if you need some more details added in. And of course, in your formatting, again, you've got your X, Y axis legend. All of your general settings are in here. You can turn data labels on or off. There we go. And in your general, all of your regular ones that we're going through. Once you're getting into Power BI, once you're using these visuals, you're gonna be very familiar with this setup. 
will say anytime they do an update, these settings might change and adjust. Of course, we saw a lot of updates here in this visualization pane in the last year. So this version of it versus the one from August versus the one from March versus February, all very different, really just taking the time to click through, get used to where they're at, where things, what's set into what things, what's a folder inside of a folder, um, lets you really clearly get used to it because they do a pretty good job of making sure all of these visuals are set up pretty the same way. Over here we got our combo. Now the combo again is showing us a line and a bar and I can do this with a stacked or a clustered. So again, as we were talking before with our stacked and clustered, the differences of how we would wanna see that data if we have different categories, could move that around. But with this one, again, you're gonna have an X axis, you're gonna have your Y axis, and then you're gonna have your line that you're going off of. So you can see we have our profit, which is our column Y over here, as this total quantity, which or the total quantity is my line, the profit is my column. So kind of based up there is a few metrics, looking at them together versus having them separate. And then I can see in my options, now I have this secondary Y axis field, the legend, and so I can adjust a little bit more on here as I'm going through. Here's some fun ones. These aren't always used, but anytime we're looking at something and we want to see numbers and our data as how it stacks up next to each other, then this visual is the funnel. And the funnel is a really good way because if we hover over, look at our tooltip, was when you see we have a percentage of the first, which is Australia, our top, as well as a percent of the previous. Here are my second, of course, my previous is gonna be the same as my first, but you can see as I move down, we see a distinct difference between the UK 3.3 million is 37% of Australia, which is 9 million. And then out of the Northwest, which is 3.6, that's 92%. So we can see how much, how that's looking compared to the top item, as well as how is this doing next to maybe its closest competitors. And then of course we get all the way down to, let's hover over that teeny tiny spot, the very last one, which is kind of showing how everything is progressing all the way down. But funnels, not used, I don't see them a ton, but they can be really helpful if you have the data show that. Again, you have a category and a values field and a tooltip if you need it. And your setup is pretty simple. In your settings, you've got your colors, you can turn your labels on or off. Again, category labels can go on or off and not as much over here. So pretty simple to set this one up. It can be really useful if that's the kind of data you're looking to have. Now I couldn't not include a pie chart or a donut chart. Again, this one is really good because I have distinct parts of a whole. They are all very distinct numbers. And so with this, I can see I have my 35 to 40 year old small number. I've got really good metrics where it's showing the amount as well as percentage. Next one up amount, percentage, I have my legend over here. So very distinct amounts, there's no confusing any of these, and they're all parts of the whole. So all of these are parts of all of my profits, so I'm not measuring distinct groups here. And again, between a pie chart and a donut chart, it's the same thing. A lot of times I see pie charts, great use, because a lot of people put an icon in here. It's a really great use for that space to kind of better showcase what the applicable data is about. So. A little bonus tip there, if you're doing a donut chart, you really wanna have one, an icon always fits really well in here. Then let's talk our gauge. Now with a gauge, we have two things we're really mainly looking at, the value, so where are we currently at, and what is our target? Where do we want to be? You can also have a minimum value in there and a maximum. You wanna be measuring additional things as well. You're also able to set in your gauge access your minimum and your maximum. So if I wanna change, it's always default, going to be double where you're at. So I am currently at 12 million, so double that 24. So if you do not set your max, let's say I'm gonna set my max for 14 million. Then you can see, ooh, we're a lot closer to that goal. So you're able to adjust that min, max, if you want to adjust that, because by default, you're always gonna be right in the middle and your total's gonna be double where you are at. 
Change your colors, add labels, turn those on or off, as well as your target value labels allows you to specify that and your regular general settings. Now, let's talk the card. Now the card is very simple because you've got one field in here. And if I click on anything, of course, that's going to filter that down. So I can, if I'm looking at Australia's data, that's only gonna show me and it's gonna just be the profit for Australia. So anything I click on on my page, any filters I have set up, the card value will adjust to showcase that or all of the whole. Now for this card visual, your settings are very simple in your formatting. You can talk, this of course is my call out value, so if I wanna make that smaller, if I want to change the color, very simple to do. You can also set your conditional formatting for this. It's a good one to use it on because you're able to really easily set, hey, is this number good or is this number bad? And you can kind of pick corresponding colors, whether a dark color, light color, red for bad, green for good, whatever you wanna set with this to make it really obvious if this number is looking good or if it is not looking good with just a quick glance. And then of course, all of your standard general settings. All right, lastly, let's talk maps. So with our maps, we've got some options. So this is the globe map. This is restricted at a lot of organizations, but this allows you to put in your location. It allows you to adjust your map type really, really well. Here's kind of how those data points will look on there. You can also drill into them if you're having multiple layers for that. You can see all my other ones adjusting. And then of course, if I drill in to that point, it's gonna show me all of the neck. So dropping from a state level to a city level inside of that map, which not all of them have the ability to do that. In your formatting, you have a location field, you have to get a legend, you can also add latitude and longitude. You can add something to your bubble size, which will increase your circle size, so corresponding larger or smaller. Then in your formatting, here's your basic map settings where you're choosing your map style. Tons of people do not ever realize they're able to adjust this in this general Power BI map, but this one gives you a lot of different options just depending on how you want to see that. So we go over, scroll in, you can scroll in a ton, I don't know where I'm at, uh, but you can scroll in a ton and I can see kind of this level more if it's at the road versus the aerial or something else. Next up, we have our filled map. Now the map and the fill map are our basic defaults that we have, but again, restricted by some organizations because those are Bing maps and some organizations do not want to use that. Now with this, you can see our setup looks different. Like the data that we have in here, um, it's covering kind of the whole state versus having a specific point. I have location fields. I have this legend latitude and longitude fields as well. So if you're collecting that latitude, longitude data being really specific, you would be able to let that set up in your, and then of course, let's do our drill down. So if we're looking at, if we wanna just drop down a, another level in there, if you're setting up multiple points in there um, to see that at a different spot, I can see it just to get that city data loaded in here. It is, here's your map settings. Again, for this one, you can decide if you want it to be aerial, if you want it to be dark, light, road, etc., and adjust it in here. Your fill colors, of course, if you want to change what you are looking at, let's bump it up so we can see that. You can also set it conditionally, so based off whatever point you want, if you want to showcase that. Um, your, some states are doing good, some are doing bad. I'm gonna show that off um, in here. And your regular general map settings. Now these two right here, this one is the shape map, really similar to the fill map, which is a good alternative if you're not able to do the fill map. This one is along with the Azure map. These are both in preview mode. So to get there, you go file, options and settings, options, go into your preview features in your global settings, and then you would be able to turn them on. So here's your shape map visual and your Azure map visual. Once you turn these on and hit okay, you would have to restart Power BI. And then as soon as you do that, they would be here in your visual section. So good workaround. If you don't have these maps, you can kind of get these for some alternatives if you really have that geographic data that you want to see in a map. Now, your setup for our Azure map, or the, we'll do the shape map first. In your shape map, again, we have a location field. We've got a legend. 
We can um, adjust things here for your color saturation. So a little bit like conditional formatting there, your tooltip field. And then in your formatting, again, you can adjust your map settings. So right now I'm showing all of the US states. I know I also have some Australia data. So if I wanna look at the Australia data, I can switch over to that. Kind of is the downside when if you wanna see multiples, um, it's harder to do that. Um, you do have a custom map, and so you can change that a little bit over here, but it's a bit trickier. So a little bit of a downside of using that one, but you are able to adjust your fill colors. Again, do that conditional formatting. You wanna change those colors up by anything. And then finally, the Azure map. Now the Azure map uh, did a lot of adjustments over the past year. Previously, really latitude, longitude were kind of the main things for that one, but we have regular location filled in here. You can see we get bubbles. We can adjust that with the size here. So if you want your um, bubbles to be larger or smaller, you can put that in your bubble field right up here um, for the size. And then of course, into your formatting. We've got a lot actually in our formatting for this that we can do for this map. So you've got your default map settings where we're adjusting our colors and options here. You can control your bubble layers. You can also change this from more of the bubble layer to more of a filled map instead. So depending on the look you're going for, the Azure maps really stepped up their game and could be a really good alternative if you cannot use the standard regular map or the filled map. I'd probably pick the Azure map now over the um, shape map here. So tons here, we can add a traffic layer in. You've got a lot of options, and we can add a traffic layer. Got a lot of options in here in your formatting for this Azure map. So if you do not have the Azure map, but you also cannot use the regular map or the filled map, definitely go into your settings and grab that one. All right, so that was a look at pretty much the majority of the visuals in Power BI. Now we did not cover any of the AI visuals. We have a great long Learn with the Nerds event or one of our Lunch with the Nerds events here on our channel where Matt, one of our other awesome Power BI trainers who he also covers all things Power Apps and everything over the Power Platform, he did a whole session on all of the AI visuals and features in Power BI. So definitely go check that out so you can see all of the other awesome visuals in Power BI that are using the smart little robot brain that is built into it, like the Q&A or the decomp tree or the key influencers. You can go and check that out. He also has a whole course on our ODL um, going into even more depth on those. Now, next video that I have for you, we're gonna go into my top five favorite custom visuals that you can get from AppSource. Everything I went over, standard. Everyone who has the newest version of Power BI has these visuals, but if you wanna talk custom, we are gonna do that next time. So make sure you like this video so I know you are a fan of what we're talking about here with our report series. And of course, follow so that way you'll be the first to know anytime a new video drops. So all of our videos that all of our trainers here at Pragmatic Works put out are all on topics across the Power Platform. So Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and more. So we look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you have ideas for what you would love to see in this report design series, please let me know in a comment below. I will see you next time.